What's up, Day Slayers? Uh, today we are looking at the Kamora trap. Uh, I did a Shark Tank, got um, tried to get pummeled by all my students. So let's see how it went. So here I'm starting off with Harry. Bottom position. I started every roll in bottom position here. So I'm retaining my guard, a little bit of inversion. We're going to get to one of our important points here. Just recovering inside position. So at this point, I'm realizing about a minute has gone by. I'm realizing that um, I'm not getting to my Kimura trap. I'm not able to Kimura his left arm. So I opt to go for this Z sweep. I'm forgetting the name of that at the moment, but I go straight into my Kimura right there. All right, so climbing his back. I go to my swim move arm bar. Let's pause right here. Notice in order to find the um, belly down arm bar, or I'm not sure if I'm gonna flip him or go belly down, but I have shin behind head, very key. Let's go back a moment. So as I'm climbing his back right here, look, I'm, I'm opting for maybe a, a rear triangle. Okay, but then as he, instead of, if he were to, if he were, if his hips were to go face the sky again and he were to fall on his back, I'd go rear triangle. But because he stayed turning belly down, I had to go shin behind head here. Okay, that was my decision making process. Okay. And notice how also I'm pin, I'm posting on my head. Oh, he did flip over. And then I roll with him with the shin still behind the head. And I find the angle for the arm bar there. One other detail I just really want to point out is throughout this whole process, I have to trust, I have to keep my hands devoted to, hands, elbows, and shoulders devoted to controlling his arm. So I'm really using my forehead to balance and roll, okay? At no point do my arms leave his arm. I stay on his arm here, thumb control. My forehead is posting on the mat. All right, let's move on to the next roll. Uh, we got Karen. Let's go a little bit ahead here. All right, so I was facing Karen here. She she falls right into my Z bait by look opting to post her hand on the mat and hug my head right there. Okay, so um, this is a key thing in Z. Where we, if you want to get to a Kimura from bottom control, you need to encourage your opponent to cross face you to hug your head. Okay, but the reason I don't pay for it is because I maintain a frame underneath her chin and neck with my free arm. So I have a clamp and a frame. Okay, you always want to work with those two push pulling uh, forces. All right, so she's hugging there. That allows me to then clear her head with my far leg. Okay, and start setting up this paper cutter arm bar right here. And okay, now this, you're gonna see here, she's applying pressure, it's taking me some time. You're gonna see with this paper cutter arm bar here, she's very flexible and doesn't wanna tap. Um, which I was being very careful here, talking to her this most of this time. Uh, she's a gamer, not gonna tap. Okay, its main purpose though is to set up the Kimura where they chicken wing their arm to relieve the pressure. She, she just, she just uh, she said, no, I'm fine there. So I transitioned it to a Kimura. And then right here, I'm in my favorite bottom side Kimura staging zone, heel on or around the hip. And I'm trying to free the bottom leg and she's, she's savvy to this battle. So I'm really having to use this push pull, pushing off my left leg, trying to retract and fetal my right leg underneath still fighting for it she knows what's going on see she's trapping between her legs right here she's trapping my foot my goal is to free it all right eventually i do free it i swim it to the outside okay now my task right now i'm my our spines are parallel my job is to get to perpendicular spines okay so i'm i'm swimming with my legs mainly my bottom leg you'll see right here i'm kind of i'm trying to i'm trying to work my way around to where my head is over here. And you'll see how I get here. So I keep working my way around as I'm starting to crank the Kimura and then I end up having to do it belly down. 
see right. I'm working my way to par. See now you can see our spines are parallel. Her spine, my spine. And it's all because I was swimming this, digging this heel and swimming it to her far hamstring. And then this finish is simply lifting, lifting her elbow off the mat. Okay. I can't bring her hand to her shoulder blade. We're going to rewind here too. Her hand is stuck on the ground. So the only leverage I have is to drive the fulcrum upward. Okay. And that's toward her humerus bone. You'll see right here. I start lifting this elbow and she taps. All right, moving on. Ooh, we got a fun one with Milton. All right, so he's pretty relentless, staying on top. I have to use a little almost X sweep right here. When I'm on top, I'm digging for the far side Kimura always. Okay, so on top position with the opponent on their back, I always need, this is the near side, I'm looking for the far side here. And I'm really floating over him. And I float so much that I sell out for it. And he gets almost a Tomonagi sweep on me. But I got what I wanted. We're going to watch this whole sequence. And then we'll go back and look a little bit closer at it. So I find my triangle. And the string. All right, let's go back a little bit. There's a few things that happened here. I'm gonna go all the way back to. So right here, once again, this is where he gets a nice little butterfly Tomonagi sweep, flip me over. I was not expecting that because um, I was paying attention to something else. Um, you can't see the angle here, but I was looking. This hand here, I was looking for his his left arm, daylight between his ribs. I wanted to fish a shallow underhook. Okay, so as I see this. I see it right here. I'm falling. I didn't want to fall, but um, but all, my entire focus, if you could imagine my eyes being right here, was on his left arm. Okay, so I fall, but I don't. I do not lose my shallow underhook on his left arm. And boom, see, I'm right there with my hands connected. That's all I wanted. Whether I'm top or bottom, we're just floating through space. All right. Then right here, my job is to get this heel to his hip, and then figure out find my reverse Kimura and or Kimura. Right here I went straight to a reverse Kimura first. You can see this reverse hand grip, but I'm just gonna use it. In this case I kept the reverse Kimura. Okay, so now here here's an interesting battle that's going on. I would like to go belly down arm bar. Okay, and the, remember the way I do that is I put this shin behind his head. I would swim it behind his head. But Milton is pretty savvy. Okay, I gotta stop, te stop teaching my students this stuff. All right, so because he's blocking this foot, I'm trying to free it. You can see there's a little battle going on there. I'm wiggling and trying to free it, but it's just not gonna happen. So I register it's not gonna happen. So now I activate this bottom leg. Okay, so instead of going arm bar, which is just my one foot on this side of his armpit, this foot on this side, now I know I'm not gonna free my other foot. So I'm gonna point these toes and feed him through the other side of the armpit. Point, feed through. Okay, and now I need to encourage him to come to top position. I roll all the way through. Point through, I cleared his head, and then I swim my leg to the side of his head and I find my triangle right there. Okay, I'm a little stacked here, but it's all right. And I find my triangle. One more thing to point out in this part is turning over, okay? So if I were, here's another part of the bubble, because I'm always on a bubble, once again on my forehead, okay? If I were to go arm bar, I would turn my pelvis to face this way, or turn my hips, my butt toward the, toward the wall. But now I'm going triangle and I feed this foot through. I turn the other way where I face the wall. Okay, so it's turning one way or the other way, triangle or arm bar. Okay, and then last little detail here, Okay, I usually like to default to pulling on the shin if I'm gonna help my legs out manually. Uh, but notice here, if I do pull on my foot, I pull on my heel. I don't pull on my toes. Very common mistake for students to make. Pull on your heel if you're gonna reach for your foot. Right here, I find the strangle. 
All right, now moving up, rolling with Kevin. This one took a little while. It took me like two minutes to get to a Kimura trap. So you'll see here, I swept the top position. Um, and I'm doing a lot of floating again because I'm just looking for topside Kimuras. Okay, the problem with this floating and just hunting for Kimuras is that I'm able to get swept a lot. And uh, so I thought I might have a Kimura here. He hugs my head, but he blasts out of it. Okay, and then Kevin was really disciplined with keeping inside hand position. So I had to look to kind of fish and bail out, turn. He's looking for his own. All right, we're going to skip ahead a little bit. Okay, so here I swept the top position again. And I found my trap. Right here, the key is I'm hugging my head to his arm. Um, so that he doesn't have a chance to swim his hand back in front. Okay, I'm keeping that hand trap there. Going over his head, I'm looking to replace the Kimura hook. Okay, but I failed. This is a side switching uh, principle here. He got his elbow to the mat, so I did. But, but by getting his by getting his left elbow to the mat, he has to turn his body, which then exposes his right elbow. So boom, I, right in that window there, he took advantage of it, boom. Now I have the other arm, and he turns all the way over, which allows me to get full connection. As long as I hold that wrist right here, I can just roll with him and take his back. I'll let you guys look at that again. That's all possible because the reason I can stay glued to his back is because right here, I got this grip on his wrist. I fished through. And I got that grip, so I didn't care about bottom position. See my hand right there? That's all I needed to stay on his back or stay on a Kimura. Now I can crawl underneath him, find his back here. Now I'm hanging out. Very important part here to set up the arm bar from Kimura is this frame in his neck. We're going to take a look at this here. Oh. Find this arm bar here. Let's go back for a second. Okay, so right here, very common mistake is when we're when we're on the back or thinking about arm bars, is a lot of practitioners keep the hands low where the tr my own tricep would be framing on his neck. I bring the hands high so I can have my forearm framing on his neck, creating enough space for this leg to swing over and chop over his head right there okay so now I have this Kimura armbar trap I'm just trying to control him cook him a little bit he ends up escaping elbow line he's re Kevin's really good at seeing where the windows are okay but once again he turns and there's always elbow elbow exposure I find it right there and then I go to my bottom side Kimura trap and he I end up finishing with an ultra Kimura you can see right there the ultra Kimura is when both feet are cleared over the top so one is outside his hamstring here clamping the other one's over the top and then to break his grip right there he's holding his inner thigh before I just use a bridge of my hips so this is an arm strength right here, right here. This is my hips bridging because I'm trying to clear his sideline with his hand. Hips bridge and the finish. I'll let you watch that sequence one more time without me talking. All right, moving on. Almost wrapping this up. Rolling with AJ here. Look at fishing for, once again with AJ, I had to use sweeping to get to the Kimura because he's, um, Kimura does require top position uh, a lot of the time on savvy competitors. So he starts on top here, I use a little spiral. Go into that one more time. At this point I'm pretty tired and I have the toughest roll to do here. So use a spiral to get straight to 
top position. And just once again, looking for this far side. Once I come on top here, looking to pin that bicep, and I'm looking to dig inside here. So this bicep pin, getting him to scarecrow right here is big. Okay, I'm looking for that pin using my head to pummel. Okay, he gets his frames though, and he's trying, he's maybe setting up his own Kimura trap. And he gets, he wins this underhook battle. And he goes to electric underhooks. Okay, locked down with scoop of the leg and an underhook. So now I'm looking to see if I can, that's a little windshield wipe I did there to free myself from the lockdown. All right, now because I reduced the lockdown, I can turn. I'm trying to sell out on this, but he escapes his hand inside. His hand goes inside. And here's a little spinning arm bar. Bunch of lessons right here. All right, some lessons I did well and some things I failed at. I'm gonna watch this whole sequence. And he is out. Let's go back a second. Sorry to keep interrupting guys, but the details, Dell's in the details. All right, so what happens here is AJ manages to get a Kimura attempt on my arm. Okay, so he gets his hips to the outside. What's happening is he's Kimuring my far arm. Okay, so my job now is to protect my arm, okay, because I can't do anything if my arm is broken. Okay, but my job is to get over his head and spin to get a, a uh, Kimura counter arm bar. Okay, so some really important details here. I have to win the hit battle. I'm trying to get my legs over his head, and he's trying to get his legs over my head. Okay, so where's my form? My form is right inside his hip here, blocking his hip's ability to move and get his leg over. Okay, so I'm blocking that form, okay? And then I managed to be able to step over because both of his arms are committed to his Kimura. My hand stays here. I get over my hand, then once I'm able to fall for the arm bar here, okay? Now, with the shin, frame and the ribs and the one leg over the head so it's a it's a jujigatami cross arm bar here uh this is with the shin in, in the ribs though it's called a uda hishigi i believe my japanese isn't great but you see this position in a lot of judo videos uh and those types of arm bars okay what's key here if you're not going to have double clamps over the top you have to finish the arm bar from bottom from uh from top position or with your opponent's hips on the mat okay this so the sequence here i didn't break the wrists um before he got up okay so he gets up without i just maintain a hook i wasn't that urgent with trying to fight his hands and once he's up it's very difficult to finish this arm bar just with one clamp i don't have very much uh compression on his arm and he escapes elbow line right here okay so you got to break the wrists while their hips are still on the mat, if you're going to go for that Udagashi armbar. Okay, I use that to transition to the leg. I'll let you guys just watch that one more time. Going from armbar to then a little K guard leg transition right here. When they posture, their legs are always available. I use it for this kind of pre calf slice sweep. We get into a little Barabolo war here. We'll just watch this a little bit. He's just trying to calf slice me here. Dirty bastard. Tries a toe hold, not gonna happen. And right here I find my hooks for a little easy barambola roll. He turns to mount. I windshield wipe to kill his butterflies. Finally find my arm trap. We're gonna go back in detail for a few more of these things. But I'll just let you watch this sequence. Come on, 
trap. And rear triangle, the good guy wins. All right, so uh, let's go back to this moment right here. Okay, so I use this, uh, I use this kind of knee line hill hook escape to then set up my Barambolo. He defends his back by rolling to his back and mount. Okay, but he's able to have this frame here and recover his butterflies. Okay, so I do this immediate windshield wipe because I don't want to get into a leg lock war with him again. That slowed me down last time. Okay, so that little windshield wipe over his toes. Okay, that's a really important movement that you guys need to get. Okay, and then that whole time I was just looking for that far side underhook. I got it. Okay, I bring my head to my fingers so he can't get his hand back in front, his frame. Then right here I'm looking to replace the placeholder and fall over the top. I don't need to pass his guard, I just need to fall over his head. And that's what I look to do. I fall to the far side, replace, get my Kamor trap. Boom, right there. The legs are free. He knows to run. Okay, he's looking to get his hips off the mat. I'm looking to control them by pushing in, pushing my hands into them. Okay, and then right here, I'm looking to go straight to armbar once again by chopping over his head. But look, his arm is blocking right there. Big problem. I'm not able to get a bite on his neck and flip him back on his back. So I had to do a foot insertion instead. Okay, so there's a nice little dilemma there. When the arm bar's not there, the triangle's there. When the triangle's not there, the arm bar's probably there. Okay, foot insertion. Once I grab my foot, it's pretty much over. Okay, because now I have neck and arm isolation via my leg and my arm. Okay, he can't get that arm back. Okay, so I don't care about my ankles crossed so quickly. I don't care about keeping the Kimura. I just wanted to get this. So I went, from, I went from holding my own wrist, look, I insert my foot, I go from holding my own wrist to then grabbing my shin. And from here, my job is to transfer all of our weight to the other side. I have to use my elbow, my knee, um, pushing off my own knee, you'll see, to get to the, our weight to the other side. And I lock up the triangle, flex, flex my foot there, and that's how you get the finish. Um, I'll let you watch that one more time, that whole sequence. And then we will wrap this thing up. Windshield wipe, far arm isolation, replace the placeholder, that Kimura hook. All over the top. Armbar triangle dilemma, if I'm ever triangle, shin control, transfer sides. Right here, I flex my left foot, and that's it. All right, guys, so hopefully uh, that was helpful. You can rewatch some parts of that. Let me know if there's parts of this I can improve or make a little bit um, easier to understand or better. Also, look down below, um, you can find the Blue Belt Roadmap figure out how far away you are from maybe if you uh, want to get your blue belt or if you already are a blue or a purple belt, um, maybe find out like what holes you have in your game and what where, uh, where maybe you have some deficiencies. And uh, that is right down below in the description, the blue belt roadmap. Um, and so thanks for joining me today and I will see you next time.